Why are there so many people there? Is there a football game tomorrow? <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks for joining us for Football Fridays at the Eck once again. Uh, we're thrilled to have you here as we get ready to beat Georgia Tech. Um, right. And thanks for being here for a, a very special edition of Catching Up With. Our uh, guest today is a, a true television icon. In the Guinness Book of World Records, you'd see Regis's name for most hours uh, on U.S. television. And he's a proud member of Notre Dame's class of 1953. Please say hello to Regis Philbin. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for coming. For those of you in the audience, uh, Regis and I are going to chat for a bit, but at the end of today's interview, he's going to be taking your questions. So start thinking about your questions now. We'll be coming around with microphones uh, at the end of today's program, and you'll be able to ask your own questions to Regis. What are your questions? Well, we like to, uh, we like to start off at the beginning. So where did you grow up? I grew up in the Bronx. You know what the Bronx is? I, I'm from Long Island, so I know it very okay. well. Okay. Uh, you yeah, know, I grew up in the Bronx. I lived there for a long time until I came to Notre Dame. And when you were a kid, were you kind of a, were you always a performer as a, as a young kid? Oh, absolutely not. No, I, uh, I, I just got through talking to some of the kids here at Notre Dame who are theatrically opposed and, and uh, want to get involved. Uh, that uh, when, I, when I was eight years old, I, I used to listen to Bing Crosby on WNEW, New York City, radio every night, 9.30 to 10 o'clock, and all the songs he would sing, and we were in the middle of a, uh, of a crisis uh, in, in America in those days, and uh, I, I would just love the sound of Crosby's voice and kept it to myself, uh, that, I, that I even enjoyed listening to him and, and uh, singing, his, singing his songs, which I sang to myself. And then one day I you want to hear that, Bing, Bing Crosby's? Yeah. So then one day, I was working with uh, Joey Bishop on his show. I was his uh, Ed McMahon. We were against Johnny Carson. And uh, we would take a walk every day. And uh, one day, uh, for three years we walked. And one day, I had nothing to say to Joey Bishop. So I finally, then I said to him, what did you want to be when you were a kid? And he said, when I was a kid, Ten years old, I would stand at the street corners of Philadelphia and I would tell jokes and people would fall down laughing. People who were coming back from work would fall down laughing. I knew I could be a comedian and he became a pretty good one, enough to hang around with Sinatra and all those guys. And so when it came time, you know, you're growing up in the Bronx. So, uh, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot oh, go to ahead. tell you this. I, I should have told you. We're walking a little bit. I got nothing else to say. Bishop says, what did you want to be when you were a kid? And I had never, ever told anyone because I was afraid I would sound like an idiot if I, if I said that I wanted to sing a song like Bing Crosby. So I said, I, I, I used to listen to Bing Crosby. I knew all of his songs and I sang them only to myself. And that's the way it's been for the last 30 years. Okay. Four months later, Bing Crosby is the guest on the show. Crosby sitting right between us. Bishop wants Bing to sing. Bing, this kid is your biggest fan. You gotta sing a song to him. Remember when you played the priest in, Tur in uh, Going My Way uh, and you sang Tura Lura Lura? Sing Tura Lura Lura to him. Bing Crosby just turned, looked right at me, said, Tura Lura Lura, Tura Lura Lura. He was great. Big heart, big hand. Okay, <laughs> that was Bing Crosby. And uh, I said, wow, what a thrill, Bing Crosby singing to me. Commercial break, come out of that, Bishop says, Regis, sing one of Bing Crosby's songs to him. <laughs> I had never sung to anyone in my life, and yet I had to turn to Bing Crosby like I'm turning to you. Can you believe that? I can. I can't. <laughs> And I said to Bing, uh, uh, but there was one song that I, that I loved that you used to sing uh, that uh, we, we, we had during uh, the Depression. Uh, but how did it go again? Uh, Every time it rains, it rains. Pennies from heaven. Listen to what the words are. Every time it rains, it rains. Pennies from heaven. Don't you know each cloud contains 
pennies from heaven. You'll hear your fortune falling all over town. Be sure your umbrella is upside down. Trade them for a package of sunshine and flowers. Don't you know each things you have can make you flowers? So they go, I forget the words now. <laughs> and, uh, and over and under a tree, there'll be pennies from heaven for you and me. <laughs> Give so, them a hand. So, so Crosby sang that to me. And uh, honest to God, I got a telegram from Mercury Records in Chicago the next day. Would you like to do a, an album of Big Crosby songs? I had never told anybody. I, I'm sorry I told Bishop that, because <laughs> I had to sing to Big Crosby. Anyway, I got the, the thing, and I've been singing uh, you know, a little bit here and there ever since. Well, thanks so much for, uh, for giving us all a sample. Um, when, you're, you know, when you were growing up in the Bronx, and it was time to decide where to go to college, what made you choose Notre Dame? My father was in the Marine Corps, and he World War Three, uh, World War Two. <laughs> he couldn't wait to get out and be a Marine, and so he went out and uh, on the on the islands, and there was Moose Cross, and he and Moose worked together on something they had to do, and uh, Moose said, uh, "Your son has got to come to Notre Dame, and if he ever has any trouble at Notre Dame." He should come to see me. So, okay, I remember that, Dad. So I get to Notre Dame, and I get one of my one of my uh, classes is physics. <laughs> Regis can't make it. <laughs> Regis has got trouble, so Regis goes to see Boos Cross. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Boos. He said, "Well, now, Regis." Uh, you got to read this book again. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really was something. He, he was a wonderful guy, Moose Cross. We were happy to have him, lucky to have him here at Notre Dame. You were also lucky to have Frank Leahy as a football coach when you were a student. Oh, my God, Leahy told us, you know, when we were students. I'll never forget the first night I was here at, for, for Notre Dame, and, and uh, Leahy said, uh, I want to just talk for a minute to you we freshmen. You're here at Notre Dame. Notre Dame is going to be with you for the rest of your life. You're going to love Notre Dame. It's going to become part of your life. Just remember, Notre Dame, you are Notre Dame. You are Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. And he kept saying it till I thought I was going to faint. <laughs> it was great. It was wonderful. And that's how it began with Frank Leahy, a wonderful coach. And you, you know, when you were on television, you always loved talking about Notre Dame football. How exciting was it for you, your freshman year, the team won a national championship? Oh, my God, it was just absolutely fabulous. You know, and I, I had a couple of uh, TV shows over the years, and one of them was in San Diego, and I got Frank Leahy on, on the show. And uh, it was wonderful talking about those days, and Leon Hart, and Tony, Johnny Lujak, and Emil Sitko, and all those great players that, Jungle Jim Martin, my favorite, uh, that uh, Leahy had at that time. It was great. And so when you were a student here, what did you study, and what did you think you were going to do when you finished school? Well, I, I, I studied physics, and I thought for sure I was going <laughs> to... I don't mean to put down physics. It's a <laughs> but I, 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 I couldn't get it. I, I should have. I should have tried harder, I guess. But... Uh, I didn't know what I could do. I, 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 they, but we had a little radio going in those days, that's all. Uh, and once in a while, uh, we had a, a, a play, but I could never go out for it because I didn't think I could do it. or could. So I, I never went out for anything. And I was telling the younger kids just a, couple, a few minutes ago that to get over that. Get over that. If you want something, you've got to try to get it. Don't be ashamed of it. Try to get it, learn how to get it, and then go out and get it. But don't be afraid of it. Don't hide from behind it, which is what I did for a long time. And then I got, finally got into, uh, uh, you know, uh, putting on the little shows and uh, finally getting into the bigger shows. And so what was your first job in entertainment after you graduated from Notre Dame? 
First job, uh, and that's the same, but well, I did the news, six, six and 11 o'clock uh, for uh, uh, San Diego, uh, NBC. But I said to them, I'd like to do a talk show. I'd like to do a, a show on Saturday nights. You want to do a show Saturday night? You, got, you can do it. So I, I had to do it myself. So I, I, I booked people out of LA, you know, and I had a nice, nice group. Zsa Zsa Gabor. Did you hear me, Zsa Zsa Gabor? <laughs> Uh, uh, Ronald Reagan, you know, great people like that. And it was fun to have them on. And then from there, I got called up into Hollywood to do that, that talk show. And that's how it began. And you mentioned earlier the Joey Bishop show. Was that sort of your, your first big break uh, in terms of on the national scene? Well, Joey Bishop uh, was a uh, 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 great comedian. And this was his chance to uh, do a talk show. And he would pitch it for Johnny Carson. He did it a hundred times, but when you're doing it for yourself, it's a little bit different. And so uh, I got a call one day, come see me, I want to talk to you about joining the show. So I went to see him, and uh, he said, I, I watched you last night on your show. You've got talent. So I was a little upset, because I, I didn't think I had any talent. I was mad at myself without having a better job. So I said, really, Joe? What's my talent? I'll tell you what your talent is. <laughs> and then he stood there for 10 minutes. He, he couldn't think of a talent. <laughs> and then finally he said, uh, you, uh, what the hell did he say? Is it, <laughs> I don't know what he said, but it wasn't, you know, it was just to get through. But uh, when, when I left, he said, you go around the corner and to the, uh, uh, the, the drugstore and have a ice cream soda and come back in an hour. I want to talk to you. And naturally, all of his uh, all of his uh, guys came in there. His uh, his uh, chef and his everybody came in and said, "No, you don't want this kid. He's not going to do it." And Bishop uh, fought back and uh, he hired me. And, and I think you had a famous exit from that show. Can you can you share that story with the crowd? Well, here's here's the exit. It's a lie. It's a liar. So every day I had to take a walk with Joey Bishop. Every day for three days, for three years. Walk up uh, Vine Street to Hollywood, to Hollywood Boulevard, over to Corey, back down, 45 minute walk. One day he says, uh, you know, uh, Johnny Carson's coming to town to do a week. Why don't you, on Monday, decide you're, you're quitting the show and just walk off the show? You're mad at me. I said, are you sure, Joe, you want to do it? <laughs> yes. So I, I had to walk off the show, and people thought that I was gone. And a lot of people hoped I wish, wish I was gone. <laughs> so uh, uh, that was our little vicious game against Johnny. Uh, but uh, then he called me back and came back. So obviously you had an amazing career hosting uh, many different shows, but the one you probably became most famous for, obviously, was live with Regis and Kathy Lee and later live with Regis and Kelly. Yeah, that was 28 years with, the, with those uh, girls, and it was a lot of fun. It, it seemed like with that show, it became a part of so many people's morning routine to you know, spend time with you in that show. What do you think was it about that show that resonated so much with folks? Well, I'm happy to hear that, and, I, and I've heard it a lot now that I've left the show you know, that I missed the show and so on. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have left. I feel I, I don't know what I should have done. But I'll always remember having uh, uh, David Letterman on the show. He, uh, he liked it, that morning show. He, he tried a morning show, and he didn't, didn't do so well, but he does great at night. So he had a, uh, a heart thing, and a, he had a, an operation, and I knew he came out okay. So about uh, five years later, I had a little uh, heart attack. Not as big as his, but I had three, three stents. Anyway, I called up him and I said, oh, who should I go to? And he said, you sit still. I'm going to take care of this. He picked the, the, the hospital. He picked the room. He picked the bed. He picked what time I should be there. The car is going to come at 6 AM to take you and be the first one. And I was the first one. So I heard him go through all of that, you know. And then I heard him uh, on the, that night I couldn't sleep, that I had to go the next morning. I couldn't fall asleep, so I turned him in. 
and I heard him say to the people, well, <laughs> tomorrow uh, Regis is going to uh, go to the hospital. Yeah, he's got a little heart situation, and uh, they're going to uh, take care of him there. Car's going to pick him up. They're going to take off all his clothes, put him on a gurney, roll him into the, into the operating room, and bust him open like a lobster. <laughs> what the hell is so funny about that? Regis was upset. I couldn't sleep a bit. Bust him open like a lobster, and they did. Uh, you know, you talk about David Letterman. You obviously, over the course of your career, had the opportunity to interview, you know, so many uh, notable and, and, and famous folks from all walks of life. What is, your, for you, what's the most memorable interview you ever did, other than this one? <laughs> you better take a drink. Well, you know, I've had a, I've had a, a, a bunch of people, uh, uh, guys that I that I liked. Uh, I liked Letterman. I liked to, to have him on the show. Uh, there were there were a lot of some people from Washington. I liked um, I liked having I liked Ronald Reagan. I thought he was uh, terrific. Um, uh, gee, uh, there are so many people on the show that uh, came on and uh, told me things that I never knew about them that were very interesting, and I can't think of one right now outside of <laughs> you keep staring at me. It's, uh, it's not helpful. <laughs> well, you've been such a you know, passionate supporter of the University of Notre Dame and so generous uh, you know, over the years to the university. You know, what is it about Notre Dame that you love so much? Why are you always coming back and giving back to Notre Dame? Well, it's a it's a thrill to come back to Notre Dame. It, it really is to uh, to see everybody and and to, to walk the uh, the paths and go down to the lake and go to the grotto and go to the church and visit the the the, the homes that you were in. Uh, it brings back a lot of a lot of fond memories. Notre Dame is is uh, I think well, it's the greatest place I've I've been on, and I love being here. Uh, but today, trying to get around <laughs> with all of that uh, stuff going on, got to get rid of that. <laughs> got to get that done tomorrow. I, Regis can't take much more of that. It's an awful lot of stuff. Do you agree? I mean, it's got to be done. It's got to be done, and it'll be done great, and it will look great when it's done. But boy, it's it's tough. Well, now's the time we're going to take your questions, audience members. Raise your hands. We uh -oh, got some this folks is the tough part. coming around Here's with a lady microphones. Right there. Yes, ma'am. This is going to be a tough one. You can tell. Well, this year especially, I'm just wondering if you have any member memories of Father Hesburgh. Oh, I have like great memories of Father Hesburgh. Now you know, um, back way back in in, in L.A., uh, they came to me. I was doing a show, uh, the Notre Dame group, Notre Dame club. And they wanted me to take a picture, uh, to to do to do uh, to be the guy to uh, talk to uh, Father Esberg and Frank Leahy was the other guest they had, so uh, I was thrilled to be with the both of them. They were just great, and then somebody took a picture. I I don't know who took a picture, and they blew it up, and they sent it to me, and uh, I've had it now for about forty years. And I took it. I took it to see. I have a friend here from Chicago, and he sent someone to pick me up at the Chicago airport. You've been to Chicago airport lately? <laughs> it's not like San Diego at all. It's really something. It's crazy. And so I'm carrying this picture because tonight I want to surprise uh, the priest and uh, everybody there. I want to give. I want to get. I want that picture to come back to Notre Dame. It doesn't have to be hung anywhere. Uh, it's it's Father Leahy, it, it's 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 uh, Father uh, Father Hasberg and Frank Leahy. What am I saying? And myself in the middle. Uh, I'm, I'm getting old now. I'm going to go pretty soon. I want that picture to be. I want to be here in Notre Dame somewhere, at Notre Dame. It's got to be not on the wall for people to see, but somewhere I want it to be. I hope I don't get turned down, but I'm going to make that pitch tonight. <laughs> Where were we, lady? I forgot. 
Got a gentleman right in front here, I think. Residence hall, where were you in when you were at Notre Dame? First hall I was in was, was uh, Zom. And uh, it, it was a lot of fun. The last one I was in was uh, the one this side of uh, uh, the uh, cafeteria. This side, what is it? Dylan. No, I was at Dylan, yeah. And uh, at night, uh, there used to be a guy that uh, used to snore uh, at the next <laughs> at the next room. I mean, really loud snoring. <laughs> and I would stop Tanif. I could hear coming down the hall <laughs> to tell the guy to shut up, you know, <laughs> stop <laughs> snoring. But uh, they were all pretty pretty good. Where did you live? I live in Dillon. You live in Dillon. Yes, I do. It's it's easy to get to the to dinner at night. Yeah, <laughs> especially on those winter nights. He's a guy that snores in Dylan now, though. <laughs> Who's, what's up, lady? We got a picture here? <laughs> Came from where? New Orleans. New Orleans, good. Nice to have you here. You bet. Who's next? Who's got a question? Raise Look your hand. This, that one question. Don't, don't be a, shy. There's another woman over there. We've heard rumors that you might be entertaining a new series, maybe, or a new show. Is that true? Where'd you hear that? <laughs> oh, it's, it's all over California. Really? <laughs> it's not all over regions. <laughs> <laughs> Once in a while I go, I do something with Kathy Lee or Bernerva, uh, Meredith, rather. Uh, but uh, no, I've got nothing coming up. But now that you've heard something, Let's get together and talk it over. <laughs> Who's next? Look at this. See? They're, they're all shy. Just the women are asking. Yes. Have you ever been laid off, and how did you cope up with it if you did? Did yes. I ever get laid off? Yes. Yeah. Let's see. You know, I... Uh, uh, did I get laid off? Had so many stupid jobs, yeah. I did get laid off early on, like a wise guy. I, I started out carrying furniture in, 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 in a, uh, for, the, for this uh, organization I was working with, in Channel uh, 13 in LA. And uh, carrying furniture and driving a car and delivering things. And then I began to be a wise guy. And I wrote little things about the good things I saw that day on our show and some bad things that I saw. It made fun of it. Well, it lasted for three, and then I took it up around and around, the, you know. Well, three days later, the guy called me in and said, you're a wise guy for saying that, but you can write, so I'm gonna let you write for Baxter Ward, and that's how the whole thing started. But I, I, I did uh, leave to go down to LA uh, to uh, San Diego to, to work down there. Who's next? Regis, did you go visit your duck and is he still there? I'm going, I'm going right after I, who wants to know that? Yes, I'm gonna go see my duck. I've seen, I've seen him now for about 60 years. <laughs> He's waiting for me. I've got a woman over there. Yes, ma'am. It's got to be Notre Dame. I, listen, listen, I think Notre Dame, I, I, honest to God, I'm so happy to see what they've done so far. I mean, to lose that running back, he's a great running back in that first game. To lose that quarterback, he's a great quarterback in the second game. And we still came back, and with 12 seconds left to go, we win that second game. Got to go all the way. I, you're absolutely right. Gentleman over here. Uh, yes, sir. Recommend a, a good Irish drinking establishment pub uh, not far from the campus. Do you know anything about Fiddler's Hearth? I've heard about it. Yeah. Uh, are, you are you familiar with it? Are you going to be there? Well, I can't miss. <laughs> What's your name? Patrick Ellis. Ellis? Ellis. Ellis. Okay, Ellis. From Buffalo, New York. Okay. I hope I see you there tonight. Okay. Good luck. Ellis is going to buy me a tuck. We've got one, time for one more, I think, here. What, what's your favorite memory of Zom House? Zom Hall? Zom House. Zom Hall. 
Zom Hall, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Oh, they changed it to house. They tried to call it house. Every time I say call it house, my son gets angry. Well, you know, we had a we had a tough guy there. What was his name? He was very tough. Uh, uh, we had a, a priest that was really tough. I wish I could think of his name, but he was really tough. And uh, what was his name? No, it wasn't that. Before, th be no, not Black Mac. No, not Black Mac. No, but it was like that. He was, and uh, uh, one day there was some knocking on our door. I had, I had two guys with me, you know, and uh, we were laughing around, and he, he, he chewed us out. I thought we were finished. I thought we were gone, and we never laughed again in that room. <laughs> All right, we're going to bring up Dally Duffy here, the executive director Dally of the Notre Dame Alumni her. Association. And Regis, Hi, I love you. Love you, too. Nice to see you. Oh, so look at this. I have a small gift, but yes. before I give you this gift, I, I, you know, this is Regis the Entertainer, and we got to see a great side of him. But there's, there's so many other sides, and last year, maybe two years ago, I got to experience one when I was in a golf cart, and Regis wanted to see the lakes, and he wanted to see his duck. And as we went around the, the lakes, we My got... duck. The duck. Your duck. My duck. We got to the far side of the lake, and there was a woman who was struggling, and she needed some help. And Regis did everything he could, and he got her into the golf cart. He never left her side until she, we knew she was safe and sound. And so that's Regis the humanitarian. And so in, in appreciation for the Notre Dame man that he is, he talked about Father Hesburgh. We have a book chronicling Father Hesburgh's life and, his, and the funeral that we'd like to give to you. Oh, and thank you for right? being a true Notre oh, Dame man. I'd love to have it. Thank you. There it is. Thank you very much. Incidentally... When I picked up that woman, I hurt my back. <laughs> well, Regis, thank you so much for taking the time out today. Okay, we loved having great. you here. Thank you. Give it up Have for Regis. Have a good time, everybody. Tomorrow's our game. Thanks for Bye -bye. being here. Go Irish. <laughs>